Good morning and happy Valentine's Day, class. Judges, Easter Redick, and the negative team. My name is Alex Snyder, and along with my dashingly handsome partner, Adam Rosenwasser, we passionately support the resolution to resolve that the United States federal government should eliminate affirmative action in college admissions. As Adam defined earlier, courtesy of the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, eliminate means to put an end to or get rid of, and affirmative action means an active effort to improve the employment, or in our case, educational opportunities of members of minority groups and women. We as the affirmative would also like to reiterate that we have limited the topic to gender and only gender, and that any strain from this limitation by the negative side is prohibited and must be disregarded at any and all times throughout this debate. The affirmative firmly believes that the gender is the sole aspect of classification that applies to both affirmative action and all students applying to colleges, and therefore is the only way to make sure that everyone is accounted for under affirmative action, or in our case, in eliminating it. Abolishing affirmative action is not so far-fetched. In fact, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, eight U.S. states have already taken measures which have resulted in bans of affirmative action. These eight states are Texas, Florida, California, Washington, Nebraska, Arizona, New Hampshire, and Oklahoma. As time has progressed, more and more states in our union have recognized that affirmative action is a flawed system and have moved to repeal it. In fact, half of the eight aforementioned states have rescinded affirmative action in only the last five years. This trend is bound to continue, and rightfully so, as it currently puts males at a disadvantage in the education and college admissions process. According to Forbes magazine, the male-to-female ratio in colleges has steadily moved in favor of females since the 1970s, which means that in as little as 10 years, affirmative action was already making its mark. Also from the same article comes the fact that females actually outnumbered males in colleges for the first time in the late 1970s, and this trend continues to rise today. Under normal circumstances, a higher female admissions rate is never a bad thing, because like my partner Adam stated, females are the minority of the U.S. population between the ages of 15 and 24, or the age of roughly the beginning of high school to the end of a four-year college program. However, the issue at hand is this. As of 2008, the total female enrollment at colleges across the U.S. was roughly 11 million, while the total for males was just over 8 million. Affirmative action may have succeeded in allowing minority females to get into colleges, but it's now tipping the scales in women's favor to the point that it's excessive and is creating a male minority in colleges around the country. In another article from Time Magazine, it is reported that approximately 58% of national undergraduates are female, and that the female-to-male ratio will inevitably surpass 60-40 in favor of females in only a few years. However, perhaps the implications of these statistics aren't quite clear. CBS News reports that not only do men uh, not enroll in college at the same rate as women, but they also don't graduate at the same rate, as, same rate as a result. Fewer admitted males means fewer graduating males, and as CBS News made clear, it's not just about grades, it's about jobs. More graduating females means that more jobs in the workplace are going to females. By itself, this is once again not a bad thing. However, it's preventing males who, like Adam said, score as well or better on standardized tests than females from getting jobs, because females, despite a higher college admittance and graduation rate, are still the minority in this country. The system is clearly contradicting itself, and in order to right the ship that is affirmative action in college admissions, we have come up with a plan to fully eliminate affirmative action. In order to ensure that only the most qualified students are accepted into U.S. colleges, the affirmative has devised a number identification system in lieu of the current college application system. This new number system would entail colleges assigning a number to each and every applicant across the U.S., and the only information that would be sent to colleges would be GPA, SAT and or ACT scores, and extracurricular activities participation. This means that all other sorts of identification which could lead to discrimination, including but not limited to name and gender, would not be divulged to the universities until they accept the student into their campus. Our plan is practical because it prevents any sort of affirmative action and or subsequent discrimination from occurring, and it is desirable because it allows previously disadvantaged students under affirmative action to stand a fair and equal chance at admission against their nationwide peers. Keeping affirmative action in the college admissions process will be nothing but detrimental in the long run. Allowing too many females to be admitted into college simply because of their minority status will cause a domino effect that will result in fewer male high school graduations, male college admissions, male college graduations, and ultimately, fewer males in our nation's workforce. 
With our economy in shambles for the foreseeable future, shouldn't we be emphasizing more graduation so we can create more jobs? But I digress. Colleges should be admitting students based solely on qualifications, not based upon whether students have an X or a Y chromosome. If you believe in what is right, if you believe that each and every college applicant deserves an equal chance against his or her peers, and if you believe that equality is more important than quantity, then you must vote affirmative, and you must vote to eliminate affirmative action. Thank you.